In this presentation, we will record the purchase and sale of inventory using a perpetual inventory system. We will record this data over here into this general journal, posting it not to a general ledger, but to just this worksheet. This worksheet being a more simplified form when there's just a few transactions in order for us to quickly see where we started, what we entered, where we are ending up at. So we'll go through this process, note what we have so far. Debits and credits will be represented as debits and credits in our journal entry and credits represented with bracketed or negative numbers, which will help us with our formulas. When we go over to this section, however, debits are represented simply or only with positive numbers, credits represented with the negative or bracketed numbers, allowing us to reduce the number of columns, simplify our formulas, seeing that we are in balance with this zero down here, calculating the debit balances minus the credit balances being zero. So this green zero is our check figure that we are in balance. This will be our net income calculation. We're gonna start with net income of just 100,000 of sales, which is basically just an arbitrary number. And the reason I wanna just start with something in sales is just to show that uh, that is the calculation here. And also to show that the sales is gonna be a credit balance account because oftentimes people mix it up with uh, the cash account up here uh, as, as a debit balance. So that's gonna be this item. We're just gonna start with that. It's not gonna be uh, part of our prob problem. That's gonna be sales prior to this or unrelated to uh, the transactions that we are selling here. Of course, that's our beginning numbers. Then we're gonna enter our data into the adjusting column and that'll give us our ending numbers here and we'll see the change that will happen to uh, net income as we make these sales. When you do this, you wanna be able to compare and contrast this in your mind to a periodic system and we'll point out the transactions where they will differ and those are gonna be the sales transactions where we will be recording not just the accounts receivable and sales, but also the reduction of inventory and cost of goods sold as we go, as opposed to doing that just at the end of the process through a physical count. We'll still do a physical count and we'll still calculate cost of goods sold uh, in order to see if there's any, any shrinkage, any loss of inventory, any theft. But uh, we're going to be recording this perpetually as we go, hence the name perpetual method. First transaction, we're going to start off on 1-1. One, one. says purchase merchandise on account, 15000 So we're going to purchase merchandise. First question, is cash affected? It's not because we purchased it on account. Therefore, we paid accounts payable is how we paid for it. But it's often harder for people to know whether we debit or credit accounts payable. It might be easier first to think about what we received if cash is not affected. In this case, that being uh, merchandise inventory. Merchandise inventory has a debit balance. We got more of it. We purchased it. Therefore, we will do the same thing to it. Another debit. So I'm going to copy this cell in H7. Right click and copy. We're going to put this in D5. Right click and paste. One, two, three. We're going to put the amount then here in E5. And by the way, you could type that in there. That'd be okay. But I'm going to practice copying and pasting, making the Excel as easy as possible. Then we're going to type this in here. Uh, 15,000. That's the amount that we're purchasing in dollars, not in units. Then we're going to have a credit of something. So we can just fill that out now, even if we didn't know the account. We could put a negative of 15,000. I'm going to use a formula and say negative of this number. So it's just going to say I want to take that number and flip the sign, which will give us a negative 15,000. Now we just need to know what that account will be. And we didn't pay cash for it, so we're not decreasing cash with a credit. We are increasing the liability, the accounts payable. So here's the accounts payable. We're going to copy that, right click and copy. We're going to put that in D6, right click and paste 123. Go into the home tab, alignment, increase the indenting just to give it that little indenting. You don't have to do that, but you can. If you have problems with the formatting because it's locked or something like that, double click on the cell, just space bar three times will work as well. Now, we already know that we're going to credit this because we debited the merchandise inventory. If we think about it, just to double check that and get a better understanding of accounts payable as we go, we can see it has a credit balance. The bad thing is going up because we owe more and therefore we're going to do the same thing to it, which is another credit increasing the amount we owe. Now we're going to post this to our worksheet. So here's the merchandise inventory. Here's the merchandise inventory on our worksheet. 
we will be posting to the middle column, the entries column in column J. So we are in J7. Now it is important or very useful to use formulas here. So this is where you really want to use formulas. So we're in J7, I'm gonna say equals, and we're gonna to point to this 15,000. That's a debit, this is a debit, those are the same, increasing when we select enter this 10,000 by 15,000 to 25,000. Also puts us out of balance down here, no change to net income. Then we're gonna to go to, to the accounts payable. That's the second account we're gonna post, here it is here. We're in the adjusting column for accounts payable. In cell J8, J8, we're gonna say equals and point to this credit. This is a credit, that's a credit, those are the same things. It's gonna make this balance go up in the credit direction, put us back in balance here, no effect on net income. Enter, so we're increasing by 21.5. Over here, remember that's a credit, it, it's a negative number for Excel, but for us it's just a credit, it's not, it's just a, it's a credit balance increasing in the credit direction. No effect on net income, so note these accounts aren't affected at all. We purchased merchandise, we have not yet sold it. We real, will record the cost, the expense related to it at the point in time of sale in the form of cost of goods sold. Next transaction is gonna be on 1-3. We're gonna make a sale, and we're gonna assume it's on account, meaning we didn't get cash yet. And we're gonna make the sale of 2,800, and there's a markup of a 40% markup. So uh, we can think of the first half of this. I would normally think of this as two journal entries. Most textbooks actually do that this way uh, these days. Although if you see it in software, they might combine the two journal entries. The two journal entries, one, you wanna think of a, a sales transaction similar to if you were a, a, a service company and just make the same transaction as if you didn't have inventory and you just provided a services and earned revenue. Then do the other transaction related to the inventory. So if we remove the inventory accounts, the merchandising accounts, and just think of that first transaction, just the sale, what you see on the sticker price, we would say, okay, uh, we didn't get cash, we got an IOU, we got an accounts receivable. Accounts receivable has a debit balance, we need to make it go up. So we're gonna do the same thing to it, another debit. So I'm gonna copy H6, right click and copy H6. We're gonna put that in D8, so we're gonna right click and paste one, two, three, in D8. And the amount is gonna be this 2,800. That's the sticker price, that's not the cost. That's what we, we have. If you, if you go into the store, you see the sticker price, that's the 2,800. We're gonna credit something for 2,800. I'm gonna do that, we could type in a negative 2,800. I'm gonna put a negative and then point to that cell. I want that cell, I wanna flip the sign of that number. So there's our negative 2,800. What account should that go to? Again, we're not thinking about the merchandising accounts of merchandise inventory or cost of goods sold, just the normal revenue account. Now the revenue account has a different name. We might have called it fees earned if it was a sole proprietor or just revenue or income. We're gonna call it sales here, uh, but it's simply a revenue account. It has 100,000 in it just showing that it has a credit balance um, here. That's gonna be our starting point. It's a credit. We need to make it go up. So we're gonna do the same thing to it, another credit. And of course, we already knew that because we debited the, the accounts receivable first. So we're gonna copy the sales in H10, right-clicking and copy. We're gonna put that in D9, right-click and paste one, two, three. Then we will indent, go into the home tab, alignment, increase the indenting. Now we're gonna go ahead and post this. Uh, we'll post this half, and then we'll think about the second half. So the receivables is here. Up top, here are the receivables. And we wanna be in the adjusting column, column J. So within J6, we're gonna use formulas. Important to use formulas here, it's, it's very beneficial. We're gonna say this equals and point to that 2,800, bringing the 6,000 up by 2,800 to 8,800. Second half, sales, there's the sales here. Here it is on our trial balance. We're gonna go into the J10 j10 and say equals and point to that 2800 now sales has a credit balance and we're doing the same thing to it another credit making it go up in the credit direction that'll put us back in balance and it'll increase net income so there we have it now note this is where we would sit this is the only thing we would do if it were a perpetual inventory or a periodic inventory system 
uh, and then we would make the adjustment to inventory and cost of goods sold at the end of the time period in accordance with a physical count. But if we have a system that's, that's uh, sophisticated enough and can track inventory as we go, usually an automated system, something like you see in, in a grocery store when you scan it, the system knows the cost and will record it, then we can record the second component at the same point in time. A better system to do a, to, to do a perpetual system here, although a, a bit more sophisticated, takes a little bit more time to do it. So how would we do that? Well, we'd say the other side of it is gonna be the fact that the inventory went down and we have the cost of goods sold related to the expense related to that inventory going down. So inventory has a debit balance. We need to make it to go down. I'm gonna do the opposite thing to it, a credit. So in H7, gonna right click, gonna copy. I'm gonna skip one line and then skip another line, putting it down here in D12 so that we can put the credit on the bottom. So in D12, I'm gonna right click and paste one, two, three. I'm gonna indent that, home tab, alignment, increase the indenting or space bar. And then we're gonna to go to the outer column. Now we need to know what that amount will be. And so how are we gonna do that? We gotta, we're saying that there's a 40% markup and this is the sales price. So if there's a 40% markup, let's do that. Let's do a little worksheet down here. We're saying that the sales price is 2,800. Now, if there's a markup, usually, you know, whatever it was, if it was a thousand dollars, and we're going to mark it up by forty percent, point four, and we, if we add some decimals there, we're just going to add decimals up here. Home tab, uh, number, add decimal. Then we're going to we're going to mark it up this times this, and then if we add those two up, that's going to equal this plus this. So if there's a 40% markup, we would sell it a $1,000 product for 1,400. Note you can do that, we can do that with a simplified calculation by saying 1,000, and then if I make this, uh, this sell 100% plus the 40%, it would be 1.4. Again, I'm gonna add some decimals. And then I can just multiply that out. I can say this is gonna be this times 1.4 so a markup would be 1.4 now if I wanted to go backwards then uh, if, if I knew this number and I didn't know this number I can say okay well I got 1400 divided by 1.4 and again I'm gonna add a few decimals and we're gonna say this number divided by this number and that'll give us the 1,000. So that's gonna be a long explanation to say that we're saying that we had 2,800 is the sales price with a 40% markup. So we're saying that this is 2,800. And if there's a 40% markup, we can divide it by 1.4 and that'll give us our number here, which will be 2,000. So I'll do that in this formula again. I'm gonna highlight this. I'm gonna remove uh, the decimals because we will use this later. I'm going to delete our little worksheet here and we'll do the same thing up here. So uh, we're going to say the amount I'm going to put uh, equals, it's going to be this number, 2,800 divided by not 40%, but 140%, which is 1.4. Because if I move the decimal point over two places, that would be 140%. So it's 100 plus uh, 40% and that'll be enter. And that'll give us our 2,000. Now I want it to be a negative, so I'm going to double click on it and just put a negative in front of the 2800. I don't need any brackets or anything because there's no order of operation problem. So I'm just going to say negative and there it is, negative 2000. Okay, so then we're going to debit something for 2000. So in E11, I'm going to say negative of that number and then I'll take it, put it up there, flip the sign. So there we have that. And then we just need to know what this account will be uh, if, we, if we have the other side of this inventory and that's gonna be cost of goods sold, what we consumed. So I'm gonna copy cost of goods sold, put that here in uh, D11, right click and paste one, two, three. So remember this is the expense. All expenses have debit balances and therefore they go up in the debit direction as we are doing here. So this is a little bit more difficult for most people to know that it's a debit, so that's easier to think about inventory going down first for most people. Then if we post this out, we're gonna say that cost of goods sold, it's gonna be here in the middle column in J13, 
equals, we're going to point to this 2,000. That's going to make this debit balance go up in the debit direction. 2,000 puts us out of balance and brings net income down. Then we'll post the merchandise inventory. So here it is here. Here it is here. We want to be here in J7. So we're going to right, we're going to double click, go to the end of it, say plus, and point to this 2,000. So this 25,000 will go down by that 2,000 to 23,000. So it brings our, our inventory down. And here we have our change of what happened, meaning uh, inventory, our sales went up by the 2,800 and cost of goods sold went up, bringing the net change down. What we really happened, what really happened net income wise is we increased it by 8,000. Uh, you can think of it this way too. You can say, well, these two, portions here are going to be the income portion and this portion and this portion of our journal entries are going to be what happened to the balance sheet. So the income went up in the credit direction 2800 and down for the $800 difference and the assets went up by 2800 and then down by 2000 for that difference. So we have the same kind of change happening there from these two journal entries, a change in assets uh, of 800 increase and a change in net income, an 800 increase. All right, next transaction. We're gonna say this happened on 1-5. Says we purchased merchandise on account. So we're gonna purchase more merchandise. We're not gonna pay cash, so cash is not affected. We're gonna pay it with accounts payable, but it might be easier to first think of merchandise inventory being what we received. It has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it. Another debit. So merchandise inventory, we're gonna right click and copy that. Gonna paste it here in D14, right click and paste. One, two, three. The amount then that they're gonna give us is just this 7,000, so we'll say 7,000. We're going to credit something 7,000 in F15. I'm going to do that with a formula saying negative of that number. So we're going to take that number, flip the sign, giving us a negative 7,000. Then we just need the account here. What will that account be? And uh, we purchased it on account, so we're not going to credit cash. We didn't pay cash. We're going to increase the liability. Here's the liability. So we're going to say accounts payable, right click, copy. We're going to paste that here in D15, right click and paste, one, two, three. We're going to increase the indenting, home tab, alignment, increase the indenting, and there's going to be our transaction. Remember to double check this one all the time. We're going to say we knew we credited because we debited the merchandise inventory. If we double check it, we know that the accounts payable has a credit balance. We need to make it to go up, so we're going to do the same thing to it, another credit. Why does it go up? Because we owe more. The bad thing is going up. Okay, so if we post this out, here's the merchandise inventory here. Here it is up top. We're going to post it to J7. So within J7, we're going to double click, go to the end of it, say plus, and then point to that 7,000 and enter. So that increases the balance to 30,000. Then we'll do the posting of the accounts payable. So within accounts payable, we're going to go to the center column, J8, double click, go to the end of it, plus and then point to that 7,000, increasing the balance and putting us back in balance. So increasing accounts payable from 21,500 by 7,000 to 28,500. Next transaction is gonna be on 1,8. And we're gonna say that we paid for merchandise purchased on 1,1. One, one. So here's the, the merchandise we purchased on account. Now we're paying for it. What are we paying with? Cash. So is cash affected? Yes, that's what we're paying with. Cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it to go down, doing the opposite thing to it. In this case, that being a credit. So we'll copy the cash. I'm going to put that on the bottom. Note I'm constructing the journal entry not by order of top to bottom, but I, by order of what is easiest. Cash is usually easiest to think about. So we're going to think about the cash, the credit first. So we'll paste that here. Home tab, alignment, increase the indenting. Then we're going to put the amount which we know from up here, this is how much we purchased, that's how much we're gonna pay for at this time. It's gonna be a credit, so I'm gonna put a negative 15,000. Then we're gonna debit something in E17. I'm gonna say negative of this number. 
So I'm just taking that number, flipping the sign. This is a, a negative number or a credit. We're gonna take it, flip the sign, making it a positive or a debit. Then we're gonna put the other account here. What's the other account gonna be? Why did we pay cash? We purchased merchandise, but we already recorded the merchandise. Now we're paying off the liability. So the liability has a credit balance. We need to do the opposite to make it go down because we no longer owe it after we pay it. The opposite then being this debit. So we're gonna copy the accounts payable, right click and copy. We're gonna put that here in D17, right click and paste, one, two, three. We'll post this out now, here's accounts payable. Here it is up top. We're gonna post it to the middle column, J8, double clicking on it, going to the end of it. We will say plus, point to that 15,000 and enter. So we're left with 13,500 that we owe. We're now gonna post this cash account and we're gonna have to scroll up just a little we're gonna do a little bit of scrolling here here's the cash account we're gonna put it in the middle in j5 and scroll down just a bit so within j5 we're gonna say this equals and point to that 15,000 this is a debit that's a credit those are opposites bringing the 120,000 debit balance down by 15 to 105,000 that also puts us back in balance here no effect on net income from this transaction Next transaction is going to be on 110. That means, and this date, we're going to make another sale. So we made another sale this time of 4,200. We're going to assume it's on account. So remember, we're going to do the same thing we did up here. It's basically the same transaction. It is the same transaction with a different number. And this time, we're going to say uh, that we, we made the sale on account. Two transactions, to how we want to think of it at least. One is the sale that we would have made if we were a merchandiser and we didn't, I mean, if we were a service company, not having merchandise, then including the new component of merchandise. That's how I would think about it. Remove the merchandising accounts, think about a normal sale of a service company, then include the next journal entry that includes the merchandising accounts. So uh, if we made a sale and we were a service company, we made it on account, we didn't get cash, therefore we got an IOU, we got an accounts receivable. So I'll copy accounts receivable, scroll down, we're gonna put that in D20, right click and paste one, two, three. The amount then is gonna be the sticker price, the amount given to us, 4,200. Then we're gonna credit something for that same amount, that same 4,200 by saying negative of that number, flipping the sign. Then we just need to know what that account will be and it's gonna be revenue. Now within a, a uh, service company, it might be called fees earned. A merchandising company often calls it sales. We already see it has a credit balance. We're gonna make it go up, doing the same thing to it, another credit, because sales, revenue, income always goes up. Right clicking sales, copy. Gonna scroll back down, we're gonna put that in D21. Right click and paste, one, two, three. Gonna indent. Home tab, alignment, increase in denting. So that's the first half. I'm gonna post this out before we go to the second component, the inventory component of our sales journal entry. Here's accounts receivable here. Here it is up top, accounts receivable. We wanna be in the entries column, the ch column J, the adjustments. We're gonna double click on it, go to the end of it, say plus. We're gonna to have to scroll down just a bit and we're gonna find this accounts receivable, 4,200 and enter and that's going to increase the accounts receivable put us out of balance by 4200 now we're going to post the second piece the sales piece here's sales here we're going to post that to the middle column we're going to double click on it go to the end of it say plus and then point to this credit now the 4200 credit that's going to make the sales amount go up by that 4200 enter so it's going to go up by the 4,200 there, put it back in balance here, and make net income go up. Now we need to do the second portion. Now we're going to add to it the inventory portion. When we make a sale, we decrease inventory, and we have the cost of that inventory, the expense of that inventory, that the cost of goods sold. So it's usually easier to think that inventory is going down for most people because I know what to debit or credit that way. So inventory is a debit balance account. It needs to go down, so I'm gonna do the opposite thing to it or credit it. So we'll copy the merchandising inventory. 
scroll back down we're going to skip a line have a new journal entry skip another line to put this on the bottom so we are in cell d24 right click and paste one two three now the amount again we have to do a little bit of a calculation here we're going to say remember that if there's a 40 percent markup and the sales price is four thousand two hundred we're going to say four thousand two hundred minus 100% and 40%, 4,200 minus 140%. You could think about it this way, it equals 4,200 um, 4, times, or uh, sorry, divided by, and then put the brackets here, 1%, 100% plus the 0.4, the 40%. Uh, so it's 140%. So 4,200 divided by 140% gives us 3,000. So that's the amount we're gonna use. I wanna make it a negative. So I'm gonna double click on it, go to the front of it, put a negative, flipping the sign. Then we're gonna put something up uh, here. It's gonna be the debit. So in E23, I'm gonna say negative of this number. I'm gonna take that number, flip the sign, enter. And I'm going to indent this now. So we're in D24, Home tab, Alignment, Increase the indenting. Now we just need to know what this account will be. And we're selling merchandise. And it's going to be the cost of us selling that inventory or cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold here is a debit balance account. It only goes up in the debit direction generally. Uh, and therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it, another debit. So we're going to copy that. I'm going to put that down here in D23, right click and paste, one, two, three. We'll then post that out. So here's the transaction here. We're going to post that up top in J13, double click, go to the end of it, plus, and then point to that 3,000, increasing the 2,000 by the 3,000 to 5,000. That puts us out of balance and it brings the net income down. So net income is, is the difference between these two. Now we're gonna do the merchandise. So we're gonna scroll back up. Merchandise is here. We wanna be in the center. Double click, go to the end of it. Plus, scrolling back down, there's the merchandise, 3,000, enter. That's gonna bring that back down, back in balance here. The main component we wanna see here is that revenue is going up, but so is cost of goods sold. So the difference here, the difference, which is 1,200, 4,002 minus the 3,000 is the net increase. The assets too are going up because people owe us money. That's what we sold. We're gonna get cash of 4,200, but we gave up inventory of 3,000, meaning net assets are going up 1,200. So then we're gonna have the next transaction. It's gonna be on 112. It says we receive customer payment for a sale on 1-3 of 2,800. So this sale we made up here, we got paid. So question, is cash affected? Yes, it is, we got money. Cash is gonna go up, cash has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, another debit. So we'll copy the cash, right click and copy. Scroll back down, we're gonna put that up top in D26, right click and paste, one, two, three. The amount is gonna be 2,800, 2,800. We're going to credit something for 2800 so I'm going to put negative of this number. Then we just need to know the amount or the account that we're going to credit by the 2800 It's not going to be revenue because we already recorded revenue. Instead, it's going to be a reduction of the receivable, showing that people owe us money by this 13000 Once they pay us, they no longer owe us that money. We need then to make it go down. This is a debit balance to make it go down. We do the opposite. A credit so we're gonna copy the accounts receivable right click and copy scroll back down we're gonna put that on the bottom in D 27 right click and paste one two three then we're gonna increase the indenting home tab alignment increase indenting and there we have it we're gonna post this out now so here's the cash we're gonna scroll up to the cash up top here's the cash we're gonna scroll to uh, J5 J5 something's in it so we're gonna double click on it, go to the end of it. Now we're gonna to have to scroll down a little bit here. So uh, you could make the screen smaller, by the way, uh, to do this, but I don't wanna do that for uh, to show it here. Uh, but that's if you if you have good eyes, you can make the screen smaller to see everything on one screen. So we're gonna to go to the home uh, plus, scroll down, 
there's our cache. It's here in um, E26 and enter. So what we did here is we added E26 and you could just, if you have the exact same formatting as I do, type in uh, plus E26. The next portion is going to be the accounts receivable. Scrolling back up, here's accounts receivable. We'll be in the middle column in J6. Double clicking on it, going to the end of it, we will say plus, scroll back down, we're picking up this accounts payable, accounts receivable, accounts receivable, and enter, and there we have it. Again, if you double click on it, we just added this F27. If you have the exact same cells that you're using over here, you can type in plus F27. That brings the receivable down. So there's gonna be our transaction. We're focusing here on these two that are happening. Now, at the end of the day, we can still do our cost of goods sold calculation. We're gonna do that now. Why would we do that? Because we already know, you might say, hmm, we already know the cost of goods sold and we already know the merchandise inventory and those should be correct. Why do we need to do a cost of goods sold calculation? It seems like a calculation only used when doing a, a periodic system. But of course, you know, uh, this number is only going to be right if there was no problems, meaning no theft, no spoilage or anything like that. We still need to do a physical count and basically a calculation. Cost of goods sold calculation will help us to figure what Indian inventory should be, what the cost of goods sold uh, should be, and if we need to make any kind of adjustment due to spoilage or shrinkage or uh, theft or something like that. So we'll do cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold. Very important calculation. You want to be able to, to know this, uh, be uh, familiar with it, work with it. It's going to start with the beginning inventory. And now it'll follow basically what we did here in many, many respects, meaning we started with 10,000. Now we're not talking about units here. In this case, we're talking about dollar amounts. Uh, you could do the same calculation in units. We're not going to deal with units now. We'll introduce them here. We'll talk more about them in a, in a future class when we talk about um, inventory methods, LIFO, FIFO, average cost. So we're going to be here, we're going to say $10,000 worth. And then we're going to say we had purchases. So we're going to say purchases, which is what we added. And you can see it here, but it's basically these two amounts, our purchases that we did during this time period. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to be here. I'm going to say it equals this number is a purchase and that's 7,000. Those are two inventory purchases, 15,000 plus 7,000. You can do it with a formula or just add them up. You'll get 22,000. That gives us goods available for sale, goods available for sale. And if we sum those up, we're going to get 32,000. I'm going to use the sum function to do so. We'll say equals SUM, double click the sum function, highlight those two amounts, and that'll give us our 32,000. Note that that sum function, if you're not familiar with that most important function, you really want to uh, get familiar with the sum function. And so that's that. And then we're going to have the ending inventory. Now the ending inventory is something that we would have to count. And note that I did give a, a, a per unit uh, count here so that we can basically calculate out what we have. Uh, but we're not going to, we're not going to deal with the units too much. Note that if, if we say that there's a uh, ending inventory seven, 2,700 units and they cost $10, we'll calculate out the ending inventory in dollars. So we're going to say then the ending inventory. And I'm going to say this little calculation, we're going to say this equals the 2,700 uh, units times $10. So that's the physical count we had. And it's important to note that note when we do count it, obviously we're counting units and we'll have to have some type of conversion. Again, we'll talk more about that, how to convert it at a later point. It might not always be even at a $10 me uh, even method. So note that if this is what we had available for sale, and that means that at any given time, that's what available over the entire time period, the month or the year, uh, that's what we could have sold uh, during that time period because that's what we had at any given time throughout the entire time period. We couldn't have sold more than that because we didn't have it. Uh, then if we count what we had at the end of the time period, we assume that the difference is the cost of goods sold. And of course, we, having done a perpetual system, have already calculated cost of goods sold perpetually as we go through the process to be 5,000. So we expect this to be 5,000. If it were not, and we'll demonstrate this later where it, would, where it is not, 
then uh, it, it'll be due to some spoilage or something like that. So at this point we'll show that it's it's going to be the same if we subtract these two out. This is going to be the uh, 32,000 minus the 27 equals cell G21 minus G22. And that'll give us our 5,000 of cost of goods sold. So this will match out what we have here. We got 5,000 cost to get sold. That's what our perpetual system had. And we had 27,000 Indian inventory. That's what our perpetual system had. Therefore, we don't need to make any adjustments. Uh, later, we'll, we'll talk about uh, this same calculation where we would need to make an adjustment and then how to make that adjustment.